When we last saw the project, the bare bones code was in place for handling cell selection. But there is another way to implement cell selection, which will trigger navigation to a new view, and that's an interface builder with a segue. Open main.storyboard and add a new view controller to it. Name the new scene detail view in the document outline. While we're here, name the original scene main view. Then we should add something to this empty screen so we know when we've navigated to it. Drag a label onto the detail scene and align it vertically and horizontally in the view. Change the label's text to say detail screen. Now to hook things up. Control drag from the prototype cell in the main scene to the detail scene and select show under selection segues in the pop-up menu. This will trigger a standard type of transition when you tap any cell in the collection view. Build and run and try it out. Now we're seeing the detail scene when you select the cell, but if you look at the Xcode console, you'll notice that the collection view did select item at is still executing too because you get the selected cell information in the console. Comment out the contents of collection view did select item at in viewcontroller.swift. Now run your project again. Select a cell, and you'll see that the navigation still works, but there is nothing showing in the console. At this point, cell selection is handled solely by the navigation segue set up in the storyboard. What we actually want is for the label in the detail view to show us the same text as the, as the selected cell. But you cannot execute code directly from the storyboard. All you can do is set up the navigation to a new view when a cell is selected. And currently the detail view doesn't know anything about the selected item. So how do you pass the information about the selected item to the detail view? Well, UI view controllers handle, uh, have a handy method called prepare for sender, which handles segue transitions. To make use of this, you first need to check that if the segue is passed into the method is the one you want. Then you use the Segway's destination property, which is a reference to the view controller that will be shown when the Segway completes to pass information on to the destination view controller. In our case, that's the, drum roll please, the detail view. We need to add a couple of things to our project to actually make this work. So let's dive into it. Add a new file to the project using the iOS Cocoa Touch class template. Select subclass of to UI view controller and name the class as detail view controller. At the top of the class, add a property to hold the text we want to pass to this view controller and an outlet for the label to display it. Go ahead and set the label's text to selection from view did load. Now we have to connect the detail scene to this class and hook up the outlet. Open main.storyboard, select the detail scene and go to the identity inspector. Set the class to detail view controller. Then switch to the connection inspector and hook up the details label outlet to the label. It looks like everything is set up now, but how do you pass the text to the detail view controller to populate this label? Well, we'll use the prepare for sender method to handle that when the segue is initiated. Head over to viewcontroller.swift and add prepare for sender to the main class. Within this method, use iflet to see if the destination for the segue is of type detail view controller 
and grab the index path for the current selection on the collection view. The index paths for selection items property is an array since you can have multiple selections for a collection view. But in this case, you'll only have one selected item. So you get the first item from the array to get the selection. Now we can finally pass that tiny nugget of text. If both the destination and index path are not nil, meaning that you are not navigating to the detail view and you had a valid selection, then you can set the detail view controller selection property to the selected cell's text value like so. That's it. Run the project and test cell selection out. Well, that works, but there are two issues with our current implementation. Number one, since you are only using one segue from your main view, the code you added above is fine, but for the sake of future proofing, it is better to name your segue and to check that you are working with the current segue always. And number two, there is currently no way to get back to your main view after you look at the details. Okay, let's start with number two first since it's actually a pretty quick fix. The easiest way to fix this is to embed your view stack in a navigation controller. That way you get things like titles for your views and the back button when you are in a secondary view for free. Open main.storyboard, select the main scene and click the embed in button. Now select navigation controller and try running your project again. Now we've got a navigation bar at the top of the app and if you tap on a cell, the back button appears when you get the detail view. If you wanted, you could customize your views by adding titles now. I'll leave that as an extra credit exercise if you're feeling a little adventurous. We will, however, fix the first problem I mentioned. We need to add a name to the segue and then check for the segue name before any code is executed. In main.storyboard, select the segue between the main scene and the detail scene. Switch to the Attributes Inspector and set the identifier to Detail Segue. Now use this identifier back in ViewController.Swift. In the Prepare for Sender method, add an if condition around the existing code. This checks the Segway's identifier property to make sure that it matches the identifier that you added in the storyboard before running any code for a given Segway. And that's all there is to it. If you build and run again, it should work just as before.